All right, so check this out. I was running late for work this morning while my wife was tending to our one-year-old who's sick with a cold. She asked if I could stop by the Walgreens down the street to get him some cough medicine. I was in a huge rush but didn't want him to go without, so I headed over there as quickly as I could. My wife and I were on the phone as I was driving and pulling into the parking lot. The street was busy and packed with cars, and as I was walking up to the store, I noticed a woman putting her screaming child into her car just outside the store. My wife was reminding me which medicine to buy as I checked my phone for the time, and that's when it got weird. The second I walked into the store, my phone turned off and the call dropped. The sliding door closed behind me and the entire store was empty. The lighting was different than what I was used to, fluorescent and cold. There was no one at the front and no one in any of the aisles that I could see. I turned around to look outside and there were no cars in the street, not even the woman who was just there five seconds ago. I actually said, hello, twice, loudly, feeling like this was some sort of horror movie I had found myself in. The entire store was silent and I go to grab my phone again to film this in case no one believed me and of course it won't turn on. I turn the corner down a random aisle and just like that, there's people there. The lighting is now different again and warmer. There was even music that I could hear. I turn to look at the front and there's a customer mid-transaction with the cashier. My phone starts working again and my wife is calling me. She tells me it just went silent and said call failed. I stood there for a minute and realized there was nothing I could do but buy the medicine and go on with my day. I don't know if this was a glitch in the matrix, odd and coincidental timing, or some weird parallel universe type stuff, but all I do know is that it was strange as hell and I don't really know who to tell this to. I'm a 39 year old female and this occurred I think a little over a year ago. This was a very real event, no drugs, no alcohol. I was in our bathroom, which has a line of sight out the back window to where my hubby passes by before coming in the door. So I was just doing my hair and looked over to see him outside the window walking up, switching the Kroger bag to his other hand to grab his keys. Then I heard the door and watched him walk by to the kitchen. I said, hey baby, and he didn't hear me. Not surprising, his hearing isn't the best anyway but I heard him lay the bags down and then lay his keys and wallet down. So I stuck a clip in the last bit of hair to do and started out the bathroom door to give him a hug and a kiss. Well, here it is. Instantly, when I walked outside the doorway of the bathroom, everything was completely different. All the lights were out and they had certainly been on just a moment prior. Totally weirded out, I felt shaky and whatnot, but I guess I managed to walk a few steps to look toward the kitchen, only to see that my husband wasn't even there. Then, before I even had time to attempt to process what the hell just happened, I saw through our kitchen window his headlights coming down the driveway. It was then I started getting extra weirded out and for sure had to sit down. I remember I propped myself sitting on the edge of the couch arm, and the next part is what freaks me out the absolute most. I couldn't believe my eyes at all. As I watched him walk across that window, it was like someone had literally just rewound a tape and I was replaying it. The exact same motions, the same exact sounds, all the way through him including setting his keys and bags down. The only thing I could think at this point is how crazy I would actually sound if I told this to anyone, except to my husband right when he got there. So I just want to know if anyone has any ideas of what happened. 
I'm open to hear about it, it's the single most unbelievable existential type of thing that's happened in my life. I will never forget it. This happened last night and I'm just feeling so weird about it. I haven't told anyone or my friends or my family because I think they'll think that I'm crazy. But I wanted to see if the same thing had ever happened to anyone else here. Basically, last night I was out walking my dog in a park near my townhouse. It had gotten dark but there were still a few people out. As I'm about to start walking home, I hear a man and a woman talking. They're a bit older than me, maybe mid-30s. But the reason that it catches my attention is because the man sounds exactly like me. It actually sounds like I'm listening to a recording of myself, same voice, and he even has the same laugh. I walk a bit closer with my dog and then it gets really weird. The guy is talking to the other woman about stuff that's straight out of my life, but it's from his POV. He mentions this trip that I took to Iceland a few years back, a small car accident that I had had recently, and even my plans to start my own business, which I'm still figuring out and haven't told anyone about. Meanwhile, my dog is acting up and even growling, which is very unlike him. I sat there for a while hidden and just trying to make sense of it all, but started feeling really weird and kind of sick so I took my dog home. I've had some time to think about it, but I just can't make it make sense. I'm still really freaked out. I feel like I stumbled across another version of myself. This next submission is an interesting one. It breaks the glitch subreddit rules, but it was allowed to stay because it's eye-opening and the lessons learned from it actually saved somebody's life and could save yours too. It goes, I've been reading r slash glitch in the matrix and r slash retcon for quite a bit in the last couple of weeks. One thing I took note of was how quick many were to ask about carbon monoxide anytime someone was experiencing something with no witnesses. I also noticed the myriad of symptoms that came with it across the posts. Well, last week, I had a friend stop by after going to the hospital. He was having headaches, cognitive decline, dizziness and wooziness, and almost passing out. The doctor at the hospital told him it was due to him being unable to exercise since it was winter and he had hurt his leg. As soon as he listed his symptoms, I remembered some posts here. I mentioned carbon monoxide poisoning and he picked up a detector before he went home. It was carbon monoxide poisoning. If it wasn't for everyone here, always making sure people check that first, I would have lost one of my best friends. So, I just wanted to say thanks and to let you know that your sort of PSA has indeed worked to save a life. Hearing my roommate from 20 miles away. I, a 23 year old female, just got home. I was laying in bed relaxing, scrolling through Instagram, and I heard my roommate, who's a 27-year-old male, outside my window scream a pure, guttural F-word. I heard him punch his truck and say, gee effing damn it. So I got out of bed to unlock the door because I'm guessing it was a crap day, but he wasn't outside. The neighbors were playing with their kids. It's quiet, but somewhat busy street. So I text him, are you okay? And 20 minutes later, I get a text from him that says, I'm on my way home and I'm effing pissed. It's still a 30 to 40 minute drive. He hasn't even left work yet. So when he gets home, 
I asked if he came home and then drove off. He said no. I asked him if he lost his cool, and then he asked how I knew that. I said, was it around 5.50 p.m.? He said yes. It was around that time that he texted me back. 20 minutes later, I asked if he said those words and then punched his truck. He said that's what he said verbatim, and then he did punch his truck. I'm not sure what this means. He was over 20 miles away towards the city, and there's no way that I could hear him during rush hour traffic 20 miles away, but I did, and I'm kind of freaked out. My mom and sister left for a hockey practice about 30 minutes ago. I'm sitting in my room doing homework and all of a sudden, I hear my sister's voice, excited, and saying, Rocky. Rocky's my dog and every time she walks in, he goes up to her excited so she always pets him and calls him a good boy. So I immediately think, oh, that's weird that I didn't hear them walk through the door at all and also didn't see them on the ring camera. So I sit there for about 15 seconds and continue to do homework until I realize, oh shit, wait, why have I not heard any of them talking or moving anything at all? I went upstairs to check and literally nobody is home and no evidence from the ring camera yet. I'm positive I heard my sister talk. This person includes an edit that says, it's unreal how many of you have stories just like mine or even real physical interactions play off in front of your face to which you are a player to. You literally experience it and then have it glitch in front of you. At least I can tell myself, well, maybe I didn't really hear it. But as far as those of you who have seen with their own eyes the reality that we're living in and physically glitched is crazy. And I hope your mental health doesn't take a bad effect. Long story short, I had a high school class ring. I lost a bit of weight shortly after high school and it flew off my hand into my car's vent. I was hopeful it was just within reach or maybe I had imagined that it was in the car, but no. I asked my dad and he looked in the Haynes manual. Huge pain to get in there, unfortunately not worth it, and we eventually sold the car. About six or eight years later, Living in another state, it was just sat there in my jewelry box one day. Tarnished and aged and definitely engraved. Side note, I have very little jewelry, so I have a tiny box that my parents gave me for Christmas or something, but I've had it most of my life. So I assume that I just dreamed that or something strange, but I know I lost that ring in the car. I was really hurt because my parents spent a lot of money on that. Even now, like 15 years from losing it originally, I feel odd about the ring. I'm still randomly surprised that it's there. It's like it doesn't belong. It feels off somehow. Last year, I was at my mom's house and we were chatting about some mundane stuff. She mentioned that she was changing her cleaning routine, and I said that I noticed that the windows were very dirty. She said she knew, but the guy that usually cleaned them was fired from the building because he stole from a neighbor. The windows are very tall, the same way in every apartment, so help is needed. I was shocked, and we gossiped about it for a while, but that was it. About three months later, I was at her house again and she says, you won't believe what happened with the guy who cleans our windows. I asked her, w wasn't he fired? She was confused, so I continued, he stole from a neighbor and got fired, right? Are we talking about different people now? She asked, how did I know that? And I said that she told me about it when it happened three months ago. 
She said it happened just the day before and checked the building's documents. It really did happen the day before, with the same details that she had told me three months prior. I never understood what happened. Long time lurker, first time poster. My husband and I were walking our dog in a very busy and large urban park. For some background, we've lived in large cities our entire lives and are very used to and accustomed to being surrounded by a lot of different types of people and situations. In short, it takes a lot for something to phase us because we've seen a lot. We were along a busy path in this large city park with a lot of people around, and we had our dog. This man coming toward us starts making eye contact with both of us almost immediately. He stops next to us and says, Hey boss, how's it going? He puts his hand out to shake our hands, and we look at him because he's acting like he knows who we are, so we're a bit embarrassed and trying to remember who he is. We hesitate and then all of a sudden he says, Why are you stalking me? I keep seeing you guys. Why are you following me? And says it once or twice more as we quickly walk away from him. We walk past him and he walks past us going opposite directions. We make it a point to wait exactly five seconds. I actually count to myself one to five before I look back to make sure that he did indeed go away and isn't following us. My logic was I wanted to ignore him in case he was dangerous and sort of defuse it, but I also wanted to make sure he wasn't following us as he started to get aggressive a bit in his tone. Well, after I count to five, I turn around and he's nowhere to be seen. I mean, literally nowhere. I can't exactly describe the area, but it was pretty open, and even if he sprinted in any direction for five seconds super fast, you'd still have seen him at least somewhere. It was also open, and there weren't really any trees or things that he could be hiding behind. I'm sure you may be listening to this thinking he was a crazy person on the street that can be found in any city, but here's what we found to be really jarring. Maybe not each thing individually, but put together. One, he was dressed extremely well. And yes, I know, I know those with mental illness and or those living on the street can look quite presentable and I'm not trying to be rude, but he looked wealthy, like old money wealthy, super preppy and well-dressed, maybe mid-fifties, almost awkwardly tall. People have screamed at us before on the street and have never looked this put together. Again, not impossible, just a bit odd. The second thing, he was so sure in his conviction that he knew us and that we were stalking him. The look in his eyes was terrifying. I can't exactly describe it, but he just seemed so sure. We have no idea who he was. The third thing, no one looked at what was going on which by itself wasn't odd. I mean, people in my city ignore people shouting and antics all the time without a care in the world, for better or worse. But when I tell you everyone around didn't even glance in our direction. People may ignore what's going on typically, but they usually walk the other way, not into whatever's going on. Moreover, Plenty of dogs within sight didn't even seem to look at this man while he was shouting. The fourth thing? He had a bizarre, surprising accent. Again, not by itself odd, but it does add to the weirdness. I think it was Russian. And the fifth thing? He vanished. Both me and my husband turned around after five seconds and agreed that he was nowhere to be found and there was nowhere logically for him to be hiding. We also realized somewhat after the fact that he also appeared seemingly out of nowhere when he was walking towards us. This was so odd. It's like he appeared out of nowhere from a different time and was so sure in his conviction to the point where we were both like, 
Was he at the coffee shop that we went to earlier? Did we indeed walk the same way to the park? But that doesn't make sense because he was walking toward us. It's really hard to describe over text, but he appeared as quickly as he left and no one around us seemed even remotely bothered. We've had people in the street chase us, threaten us at knife point, throw bottles at us, and have even been called homophobic slurs multiple times, but quite frankly, this was just as freaky, if not freakier, than all of those because I can't come up with an explanation, especially for the vanishing. My husband is a complete science guy and believes in absolutely nothing paranormal or anything that isn't evidence-based. He's sort of my skeptical pulse for things, but I can tell that even he was completely thrown off. So this happened last year. My boyfriend, who's now my husband, and I had recently moved into our apartment and were still getting situated in a new space. One afternoon, he had left to go help his family with something and left me alone in the apartment. I didn't do much but lay around all day and finally decided to try taking a nap. I double-checked the front door was locked because I was paranoid about living in an apartment building with neighbors so close by. I put on a YouTube video and laid down on the couch. After about 10 or 15 minutes of laying there, I heard him standing outside the front door trying to unlock it. I know I wasn't asleep or had fallen asleep because I was still listening to the same YouTube video. I didn't wake up though. I rolled over and pretended to still be sleeping. I heard him come in, close the door behind him, and put something on the table. He walked into the living room and I could feel him standing near me. I heard him say something like, Hey babe, are you asleep? And then I heard him walk away into the back bedroom where he sat down in his computer chair. Shortly after this, I actually did fall asleep. And when I woke up, it was about an hour later. I walked over to the back bedroom and it was empty. I ended up texting him asking where he went and he responded that he hadn't left his family's house yet, but he would be home soon. I started freaking out. Who was in my house? I ran over to the front door to make sure it was still locked. Hopefully I had actually fallen asleep and dreamt the whole thing, but the door was unlocked and there was a pile of mail sitting on the table that wasn't there before. When my boyfriend got home, I told him the whole story. He seemed to think that I was just dreaming, but we can't explain how the mail got brought up or how the door was unlocked. We checked the whole apartment for signs of anything missing, but everything was fine. To this day, I don't nap in my apartment because of this. About four years ago, I lived in the Bay Area and was in the awful morning traffic. That morning, I was in a big rush and had forfeited my coffee at home with the intention of having it once I got to work. Anyway, I'm sitting in this traffic when I go to mess with the radio. I'm totally distracted and I rear end a white truck in front of me. My heart stops, I turn off the music I throw on my blinker and try to see how the dude I crashed into is reacting. Except, he's not reacting at all. He doesn't look in his rearview mirror at me, doesn't signal, nothing. Traffic moves forward a tiny bit and I'm sick to my stomach trying to see the damage on his truck that I've caused, but there's no damage at all. Crazy, because I can vividly recall the crunch noise and the feeling of the impact today. I figure that my car got the brunt of the damage and this guy probably doesn't have insurance or doesn't want to stop in this horrible traffic. I cheer myself on, like, okay, I guess we're just gonna have to get our car fixed. That sucks, but at least his day isn't ruined. As I'm getting closer to work, I keep hearing my brain say, that didn't happen, it wasn't real. 
I totally disregard this because the crunch of the car and the thud of the impact was so, so real. When I get to work, I jump out to assess the damage to my car. There's not a scrape. There's nothing. With the noise that it made, I imagined my entire front bumper was probably smushed inwards. I don't know. I'll never forget the experience and feeling of this. It's absolutely wild. I'm not schizophrenic, I don't do drugs, and I was wide awake. I just don't know how to explain this car accident that never happened. I finally experienced my own glitch. At least I think I did, because I can't explain this. I had ordered some jewelry on Amazon, and when I got them, they were way too small, so I needed to return them. So my boyfriend put it in the package and then folded the bag and put it in the trunk of the car so he wouldn't forget to return it to UPS. So the next day, he returned it with a few other things that we needed to return, and I got an email saying it was returned and the refund is on its way. Here's the crazy part. Yesterday, a week after he returned it, he was cleaning his car out and there was the package. Folded like he folded it just a week ago and in the trunk with the jewelry still in it and everything. But what's even crazier is the package had a return label on it that UPS placed. After he found it, he came and asked me if the package was returned back to sender. Then I put it back in the trunk or something and I just told him, uh, no. Also, I've been grocery shopping and running errands all week, which requires me to open and shut that trunk, and I never once saw that bag in there. We're still rubbing our heads thinking of how this could have happened. There's no way I would have missed seeing it there all week, and there's no way he brought it back to the trunk after returning it on accident, because I wouldn't have gotten my refund. So, now I have this piece of jewelry that I don't want because apparently the universe, or some glitch, wanted me to have it. Kind of panicking over disappearing object phenomenon. I was looking for my vape, and I knew I was just sitting down at the kitchen table, so that's where I probably left it. I come and check about four times to make sure that it isn't there. I have ADHD, so I always have to check my last three locations. So then I go into my sister's room. Nothing. My room. Nothing. I check the kitchen, which is just looking over the table, and nothing. I step into the living room and throw my cat's crinkle ball a few times to keep myself from getting pissed off about losing my vape in thin air. Then I walk into the kitchen, I glance at the same place again, and there it is. Flat on the table, clear as day with nothing under it, nothing on top of it, it's just on the table, exactly where I looked over 9,000 times. And now I just feel crazy and uneasy. I'm especially sensitive to these things because I'm recently recovered from DP and DR. What just happened? Anyone else experience this? I'm currently in Puerto Rico at an Airbnb in a residential community. I'm here through a series of positive synchro... Synchron synchronicities. <laughs> I'm here through a series of positive synchronicities. I'll mention that I've been very much involved in various personal, spiritual, and let's say interdimensional ponderings and adventures for about eight months. I'm in Tokyo, a small little beach town. I got lost literally two blocks from my Airbnb. I thought I was on the same street. I had only walked about a half block away and turned right around because I have to smoke off premises. It was daytime and I was on a different street with all new houses 
and each had like five dogs that were barking at me. I remember things by landmarks, and it was a different street. I broke out in a sweat. These dogs were all barking. I asked someone how to get back to my Airbnb, and I was somehow one street over. I turned a corner and thankfully found it immediately. Fast forward to ten minutes ago, I walked again to the same spot and the street that I was on isn't there. It's really not there. I'm panicking and no one will believe me. I didn't lose any time, I didn't black out. Things just feel different, but I don't know if it's just because it was so jarring. Has anyone else ever experienced this? Train derailed a glitch. This was 25 years ago, but it still baffles me today. I woke up for work at 20 years old like I did every morning at 7 a.m., but something felt off. Everything I did that morning felt like I was in slow motion where time was speeding faster. I did all my normal things. I had breakfast, showered, but it seemed to take so long. I looked at the time and thought, how has so much time passed already? I knew I was going to be late if I didn't hurry, so I left the house in a rush, but even running out the door felt like I was in slow motion. I literally ran to the train station, but it felt like I was getting nowhere fast. I can't explain it fully, but I was at my normal regular speed, but everything around me seemed to be moving at a different rate, even when walking. It was like everything around me was going a little bit faster. The wind, the cars, the birds, and the people, it all seemed to be going faster than normal. I made it to the station and ran to my platform just to see my train leave. I'd missed it by seconds. I thought, okay, well, there's another train in 15 minutes. I'll be a little late, but that's not too bad. 30 minutes passed and I asked the rail worker what was happening. He said he was as confused as I was because the next train should have been there and he couldn't reach anyone at the next station. A few minutes later, he was able to reach someone and he looked like he was going to pass out. He made an announcement over the speaker that the train had derailed in a tunnel. I said to him that was the train that I missed earlier and he said, yes, you're lucky you missed it. So they arranged for buses to take us to our destination, and I heard on the news that night the grim details. Nobody had been seriously hurt because the compartment that was worst affected was empty. They found it odd that no passengers were in that particular compartment, and that compartment was the center of the derailment. Had there been someone in there, they'd be seriously injured or worse. They showed images of it and it freaked me out. I'm a person of habit and I like to sit in the same area every day. I sat in that compartment every day, the same compartment that was worst affected. One lady in the compartment next to that one had a broken arm and the media was saying how lucky it was that nobody was in the other one. I would have been in the other one. Had I not missed the train, I might not be here today. That day was so weird, and I've never forgotten it. How I was rushing so fast that morning, but no matter how fast I went, time sped faster. And I almost caught up to it, but I missed it by mere seconds. I know people might say, oh, it's the morning, you were tired, it wasn't anything crazy. But the moment I got up, something felt really off, and that feeling only left after I found out about the train. After the train derailed, it was like the time went back to normal, and I never missed the train again. The only day I missed the train was the day that it was derailed. I feel like something saved my life, and for some reason, I was meant to be here. Time loops and seeing my sister twice. 
The story I'm about to share is 100% truth and really happened to me about 15 years ago. Believe it or not, but to this day, I can't explain it. I've changed the names to remain anonymous. When I was 15, my family moved into a rental house. There was always a weird energy about that house. I can't explain it, but something was always just eerie about it. It was a beautiful old home, and an elderly widow had lived in it before us. She had been an opera singer and a college professor in the arts. Her name was Mrs. Martin, and she became kind of a character in the house that we'd reference often as her children rented us the home with literally all of her belongings still in it. They didn't even clean out the fridge. It was very strange. The house was basically left like the day she passed away. Oh, and the attic was infested with bats. No clue if that's relevant, but it contributed to the spooky factor that was always felt in the house. I never liked staying by myself there, even during the daytime. On the night of the incident, I was home with my best friend, Mallory. She's also 15. Her younger sister, Olive, 13, and her little sister Emma, 11. Mallory and I were in the living room watching a movie and Olive and Emma were hanging out in the den, which was a room off of the living room with a door, and they were watching TV. No parents were home at the time. At one point, my sister Emma decided to go upstairs and take a shower. The way the house was set up, there was only one staircase and you had to walk through the living room to use it. So she came out of the den, walked through the living room, went up the stairs, showered, and was up there for maybe a half an hour. When she was done, she walked down the stairs in a white towel, stopped on the sixth step and went, hey guys, with a little wave to which we acknowledged her cheerfully. And then she kept walking down the stairs through the living room by Mallory and I watching TV and then opened the door into the den and closed it behind her. My mom had been folding clothes down in the den earlier in the day, which is why she came downstairs to get dressed. Maybe two to five minutes later, Mallory and I, still in the living room, and Olive and we assume Emma are watching TV in the den. When we hear from over our shoulder, hey guys, in the same inflection and tone as before, and it's my sister Emma in a white towel who had walked down the stairs and was stopped at the sixth step and had her hand up for a small wave, and then went to keep walking down the stairs when Mallory and I both gasped, turned and looked into each other's faces with absolute horror. It happened so quickly that we both bolted upright, ran to the den, burst open the door to a startled Olive. Emma was trailing close behind with a, what's going on? When I opened the door, I truly expected to see another version of my sister sitting in there. But no, it was just Olive. Mallory and I immediately began questioning them. Emma, didn't you just walk down here a couple of minutes ago? Olive, are you sure Emma didn't come into the den just a few minutes ago? Emma, did you come downstairs after the shower but then go back up somehow? But we knew there was no way that she could have come back upstairs without walking by us again in the living room. It just made no sense. Both girls were so confused and beginning to get scared. They truly had no idea what we were talking about. Emma swore she had only come down the stairs that one time and Olive swore that she had never walked into the den in a towel before we all came in together just then. Because our sisters were so young at the time and we could tell they were getting spooked, we decided to just pretend that we were kidding and then left them to go back into the living room. I remember sitting in silence and maybe even asking, you saw that too, right? And then we never spoke of it again. I honestly didn't even tell my parents or my sister what had happened until a couple of years later. My sister says that she has no memory of it at all. 
I haven't spoken to Mallory since high school, so I have no idea if she remembers it. All I know is, if Mallory hadn't been there to witness it and have the same reaction that I did in that moment, before either of us spoke a word, I probably would have thought I was losing my mind. I'll never forget the horror and the confusion she gave me when Emma came down the stairs that second time. To this day, it still creeps me out just to think about it. In the years since, I've read many stories about glitches in the Matrix and seen some about time loops. People witnessing the same event happen twice or more in the same way, usually very close together. I believe this is what I and Mallory experienced with my sister that day. We only lived in that house for a year before my parents purchased their own home and we moved. Last year, my sister went back to visit the town and said she drove by that house. Apparently, they had split it into two homes to rent it out to college kids. We both agreed that the strange forces that existed in that home were probably not too happy to be split in two. Has anyone else ever experienced a similar time loop like this? I've always enjoyed reading other people's experiences on this page, but I've never posted anything. Mostly because I've never experienced anything until yesterday. I live in Japan and was on the train heading to meet some friends. There was a young woman sitting near me who almost missed her stop because she was napping. I saw her realize that we'd stopped at her station and then she left the train in a rush. I didn't think much of it, but then maybe five or so minutes later, I look around and that same woman is standing three feet away from me. I swear, I watched her bustle off the train, but there she was, swaying slightly as she napped while standing up. We'd only made one other stop, so there was no way that she could have gotten off and then somehow gotten back on the train within the train schedules. I had to do a double take to make sure I was seeing correctly. It was super freaky. I had my first shared glitch. Oh, he said bless you, right? Thank you. My daughter and I were at the park. I was doing laps around the outside of the three-foot chain-link fence while she played. When it was time to go, I headed out the one opening at the bottom of the enclosed area and walked around the fence to the left and my daughter was going to hit the slide one more time and meet me at the side entrance. Side note, this whole park, including the chain-link fence, is maybe 300 meters. It's not a large park at all. As I'm walking, I look down for a second not to trip on the snow, and when I look back up, my daughter's gone. This whole place is open. You can see through the chain link, and no one else is around. And she's not fast enough to have run away and been able to find something to hide behind in the three seconds that I looked away. I obviously stop in panic and frantically look around. Just as I'm about to call her name, I hear, Mom and she's standing right there at the top of the playground. There is no way she was there. You can see the entire top of the playground where she was standing. It was open bars, and it sits higher than the fence, so nothing was blocking it. When she got down to me, the first thing she says was, Where did you go? I looked up and you were gone. What happened? So, back in 2015, one of my cats disappeared. I had been in my apartment for, I think, less than a year at that time and had three cats. I was having new carpet put down this day, so I was going to take them to my sister's house for the day. I put Cookie, my gray cat, in the small cat carrier alone because she had been a little under the weather and I didn't want the other two to aggravate her. 
I secured each zipper with one of those colorful pipe cleaner things that you use for crafts. I had to secure it because my cats had learned how to unzip their carrier. I put the carrier in the car behind the driver's seat and put the larger kennel slash cage on the seat with the two other cats. Their names are Cupcake and Mischief. I rolled my windows down about halfway. I locked the car and engaged the alarm. I walked my daughter to the bus stop in front of our apartment complex, went back inside to get my purse and stuff since I was going to be out for a while, and then I came back outside to the car. All of this took about 15 or 20 minutes, max. I went to check on Cookie because, like I said, she wasn't feeling well. The other two were fine because I could see them through the opened window when I walked up. I reached down for the carrier and it was empty. I immediately freaked out and checked the zipper on both sides, just knowing that she had somehow unzipped it, but they were still secure. The pipe cleaners were still twisted in the very specific way that I had them. The carrier was still in the exact spot in the exact way that I left it. I had undiagnosed OCD, so for me, things have to be placed just so in very specific ways or it gives me bad anxiety. And I always remember how I place things and I can tell when something has been moved by someone else. But there was no opening. I checked all over the car nothing. I went back inside because I really started to think I was insane and probably just brought out an empty carrier, which I didn't because my daughter carried her to the car and was talking to her and stuff before we went to the bus stop. That was her favorite cat. I even opened it so she could pet her before zipping it up and putting the pipe cleaner back on. I searched everywhere for her. Even went back out to the car to check the carrier again, but of course it was still empty. I still can't make sense of it, and my brain hurts to even try. Everything in the car was exactly like how I left it. Everything but Cookie. The doors were still locked. The windows hadn't been messed with, and if someone had reached in to unlock and open the door, the alarm would have gone off, and it never did. Also, if someone was going to steal one of my cats, why not take the two that were easily accessible? Cupcake was a beautiful Lynx Point Siamese. If anyone was going to take one out of the three, it would have been her. But like I said, the alarm would have went off on the car. My car was parked underneath my assigned stall with the driver's side next to a wall so no one could have walked by and been able to see Cookie in the carrier on the floor. Even after taking my two other cats to my sister's, I came back to look around for her inside the apartment again because I felt really insane at that point. It's bothered me for years. It's like she vanished into thin air. This isn't the only strange occurrence that I've had regarding cats, but it's definitely the most disturbing because what the hell? What even is this? Something happened today. I don't have a logical explanation for it, except simple coincidence. I'm in my late 30s. I occasionally will think of random people that I went to school with and out of curiosity try to look them up online to see who they became after high school, just because I'm curious. Today, at around 10.30 or so, I thought of a random guy from one of my classes. He wasn't anyone significant to me, he just popped in my head. I tried to find him on Facebook, I couldn't, and then I moved on. At around 12.40, I couldn't believe it. He walked by as I was sitting in the parking lot at my job. He walked by my car pretty closely too, almost like he was going to run into it. I saw his face clearly, and it was him. I was stunned. I haven't seen this guy in over 20 years. I randomly think of him, and then I see him. What even is that?
This happened yesterday, and honestly, I'm not sure how to feel. I was watching a video of a streamer playing a game that I like to play. Everything was normal until the streamer said something about going to his brother's birthday. I thought to myself, it's his brother's birthday again? And then he mentioned it was his 21st, and when I'd heard him originally talk about it, it was also his brother's 21st. So I just thought maybe he lied before, because I knew for a fact that I've heard him talk about it in a video from months ago. As he continued speaking, I started to realize he was quite literally saying the exact same thing he said when I thought I originally heard it. To make sure it wasn't deja vu, I decided to test my theory and say out loud what he was going to say before he said it, just to see if I was 100% sure. And sure enough, I was right. Even what he talked about after, which was an entirely different subject, I knew verbatim what he was going to say. Because again, I swear I'd watched it already. I went to check for the video in his history that I thought I saw a few months ago, but I couldn't find it. I justified it by saying maybe this was just pre-recorded or reused content, but no. The expansion he was playing in the stream came out just a few days ago and the live stream had happened the day before. I've had weird things happen, but that freaked me out. Everything seemed so familiar. I was getting gas for my car, and where I'm from, there's gasoline boys that put gas in your car. You don't have to go out and do it yourself. As I opened my windows and mentioned how much and which gas was 500 pesos, I looked in front to see a couple walking out of their car. Then, when I turned back to the gas counter, it was almost done. It sat around 450 pesos already. Confused and startled as to how fast that was, I looked back to the couple to see that they had already walked past me and are now beside my car. I can't remember the past 5 to 10 seconds during that time, and it still haunts me to this day. It happened again. I'm laying in bed watching Minecraft YouTubers on TV. I usually pick 30 to 60 minute videos. A meeting notification goes off from my phone beside me. I looked at it, and it says, Team Huddle in 15 minutes. And I read a two or three lines of what the meeting will be about. When I looked back on the TV, the video was already about halfway done. The guy playing was almost complete on his Minecraft build, and then my laptop beside my bed rang as the meeting was starting. I was so confused to think that two lines of information took me 15 minutes to read. I attended the meeting and was really confused, even to this day. Where did the time go? A few years ago, well, 2011 to be exact, my friend and I took our kids and my new car to the mall. It was a pretty big mall and we parked next to the dick sporting goods like we always do. We go shopping and come out and we can't find my car anywhere. We thought someone had stolen it. It was when OnStar became a thing and I ended up calling them to track it before I called the cops. They said it was still at the mall and had moved locations in over four hours, which is how long we were inside the mall. She sent us the location and sure enough, it was parked on the other side of the mall in front of J.C. Penney. We still joke about it, but it was seriously so odd. Even my son, who was about seven, said he remembers walking through the Dick's sporting goods to get inside the mall. I still wonder how that even happened. We definitely didn't just forget where I parked it. Three years ago, my husband's family moved out of state to a small town in Wyoming called Rollins. From our house, it's about a six-hour drive. 
Last year in July, we went for a visit. On our way there, we kept seeing a moving truck. I never did get a good look at the driver, but I could tell it was a woman with dark hair and a bright pink shirt on. For whatever reason, the color of her shirt really stood out to me. We stayed in Wyoming for four days. On the morning that we left, we stopped at a gas station in Rollins to fill up our tank before hitting the interstate. There was someone else at the pump in front of us in a moving truck. I didn't think much of it until a woman walked out of the gas station toward the moving truck with dark hair and a bright pink shirt. I took notice of her this time, thinking how odd that we all traveled to the same place and now we're at the same gas station and she's still wearing the same clothes. I wrote it off as a weird coincidence and began our journey home. We stopped for about an hour or so at one point to eat, and then later on we stopped again to grab some stuff from the dispensary. We live in Colorado and we're over 21. It's legal. About 45 minutes before we made it home, I had to use the restroom, so we stopped at another gas station. I went in, used the bathroom, and then got in the car and waited for my husband who was still in the gas station. Once again, I saw a moving truck at the gas pumps and to my disbelief, the dark-haired woman with the pink shirt got out of the truck and went inside the gas station. I never saw her again after that, but I'll always think how crazy it was that we all ended up at the same places multiple times over several days, and she never changed her clothes. To give some context, I bake about three or four times a week. I bake breads and sweets and stuff like that. And I have a jar of instant dry yeast that I keep in the middle back top of the shelf. It has a specific home because this isn't the first time I couldn't find it. And I once left it out of the fridge, so after that I designated it a home. This part is important. Yesterday, I was baking alongside my girlfriend who was cooking dinner in the kitchen. As I was preparing my sourdough, I wanted to add a quick scoop of yeast to give it a little more oomph. When I couldn't find my yeast in the normal spot, I tore the kitchen apart. I checked every cabinet twice, checking its home, which is in the fridge, where I usually keep it about five or six times. Basically, rearranging the fridge each time to make sure it wasn't behind something focusing my search where I typically keep it. I enlisted my girlfriend's help and to no avail, 20 minutes went by and I begrudgingly gave up. My bread really needed that yeast and it ended up way flatter than I wanted. Naturally, a few hours later, I pop open the fridge and there was my jar of yeast, exactly where I left it last time in the fridge. Basically, I felt mocked. It was strange. Not the strangest thing that's ever happened, but I felt like I should start documenting these glitches. It's only me and my girlfriend in the apartment, and she's not one for practical jokes, and she wanted the bread to turn out good too because we were bringing it to a New Year's dinner party. Does anyone else experience any extra glitches lately? This happened last night. I was working on some clay projects and had just finished, so I got up to wash my hands. I rolled up the sleeves of my sweatshirt and as I was washing my hands, I saw a tack stuck in the crease of my sweatshirt. I was so confused, there's no clue how the hell it got there. I was thinking to myself, dude, all you've been doing is sitting down, painting and sculpting. How did you get a tack in your sweater? I was going to grab it and toss it out when I dried my hands. I grabbed the paper towel, wiped my hands, and when I went to grab the tack, it was gone. I didn't hear it hit the floor, but was standing on a small mat that I have at the kitchen sink, so I assumed it was there. No. I've looked everywhere on the floors and counters. The thing is gone. I checked the sink, and nothing. Both drain baskets are in place and it's not there either. 
This is one of the weirdest, inexplicable things that I've ever experienced. The tack being there in the first place, I still don't understand. Nothing has fallen off my walls or anything. I don't have any loose tacks in my home. They're all in a sealed case in a drawer in my bedroom. I'm so confused. The sweater wanted a tack snack. I refuse to accept that I messed up counting this many times, so this has to be some sort of glitch. I'm making cake pops. I rolled out little cake balls on a tray and counted 15, five rows of three. I put them in a freezer to firm up while I cleaned up and gathered the rest of my ingredients. When I took them out 10 minutes later, I noticed there was only four rows of three. It's only 12. I counted them several times and I got 12 every time and figured I must have miscounted the first time. Simple enough of an explanation. I dip them in chocolate and put them back in the fridge. A couple of hours later, I take them out and now there's 14. What in the cinnamon toast cake balls is going on? This happened about two years ago. It's not as creepy or weird as most of the posts on here, but it's confused the hell out of me and my fiance ever since. Around two years ago, we were about to go on holiday. When we go on holiday, we always keep our two cats in. They usually like to go out first thing in the morning so that we can get them in the cat carrier and take them to the cattery while we're away. This one morning, cats were in I had made sure the night before while they were in to close all the windows. This isn't the first time we've had to do this for vet trips, holidays, and stuff like that. I get the cat carriers. They freak out, as always. My female cat runs upstairs. She's by far the more nervous of the two. I manage to get the male cat in his carrier. Me and my partner go upstairs to find the female cat. and She's nowhere to be seen. At this point, that's pretty normal. They'll always try to hide anywhere that they can in this situation. We spend about a half an hour searching every single possible place in this house, but to no avail. Still thinking she's found some ridiculous hiding place. In the past, she has managed to hide under a dressing gown that was on the floor, in drawers under the bed that we have, and I have no idea how she managed to squeeze into other various hiding places. Beginning to get a little distressed at this point as we have to leave soon to get them to the cattery and leave for the airport. I go downstairs for a triple check. Cats can obviously be really elusive when they want to, so she could have snuck past us, of course. And I see my cat sitting, waiting at the door to be let in. Both of us had absolutely no idea how it happened and were absolutely blown away and confused. The strange part is, she seemed to have completely forgotten about the fear and anxiety of going in the cat carrier and trying to hide. She just strolled in. I grabbed her and I put her in the carrier. We're both kind of freaking out at this point, so again, I check every single door and window in the house and not a single one is open or unlocked. Now, I'm not a believer in anything supernatural, really, but... This one really weirded us both out, and I still think about it to this day. Maybe there's some explanation or something I miss, but I've never been able to work it out. Maybe someone in here has an obvious answer, because we don't. On my way home from work, I stopped and picked up a 10-pack of Timbits and a drink. I got home, but I forgot the donuts in the car. A couple of hours later, I realized, so I went back to grab them. Once I got into the kitchen, I opened the box and there was a small gold chain hanging out inside the box on the corner. I thought maybe someone's bracelet had fallen off and gotten into the box because, you know, logic... 
My parents came home about an hour later and I told them what happened and showed them the chain. My mom gets this clouded look on her face and goes, No, where did you actually find this? We've been looking for this for ages. This is a gold tie chain that your dad got as a gift when we got married and it's been missing for a while. I was dumbfounded. I literally found it inside the closed box of Tim Horton's donuts that I brought home just hours earlier. They didn't believe me and I got in trouble. My most recent glitch happened last month when I bought myself two jars of pesto sauce. I put them both in the fridge on the same shelf. Later that week, I opened the fridge and what do I freaking see? Three jars of pesto, all from the same brand. I know I didn't buy the third one since I was perfectly aware that I had two freshly bought jars and I'm very organized with my shopping since I'm broke and don't have extra money to spend on pesto. My mom, who's the only person besides me that lives in my apartment, also wouldn't have bought another jar of sauce since A, the woman hates pesto and B, we usually grocery shop together on the weekends and I know she hasn't gone to the store in the middle of the week without me since she hasn't asked me to take the groceries in. She never carries the grocery bags from the car herself, I don't know. I looked at the jars and two of them were identical while one had a different expiration date. I assumed this was the imposter since I got my two original jars at the same time and they would have likely been identical. I laughed and showed my mom the three jars and joked that one would definitely disappear tomorrow and she told me to eat the glitch pesto and see what would happen to me. She also confirmed that she wasn't just playing a prank on me and just randomly bought more pesto. In a very fitting turn of events, the third jar disappeared the next day. Forest Trail This happened six years ago and I only found this up today. My wife and I just got out of college and didn't know what to do outside of looking for jobs. One day, we were bored, so I drove us to a local butterfly sanctuary. It was the first time I've been there in years and I didn't notice a forest trail was open to the public. We decided to try it out and it was relaxing. The loud noises of the city were gone and we met a few other people on the trail at first and even passed by a forest adventure themed park near the entrance. After a few minutes of walking, it started to get foggy. I saw two young pine trees on each side of the trail bending towards each other, creating an arch. I jokingly commented to my wife that we might be walking into Silent Hill. <laughs> it's a man of culture right here and she just chuckled and we continued on. It was getting a bit worrying. We've been walking for around two and a half hours already and the trail just continued straight as a highway, seemingly no end and no other people in sight. Finally, a huge boulder stuck on one side of the trail broke the monotony. It was enormous. We had to slowly walk around sideways while hugging it or else we'd fall off the ravine on the other side of the path. The trail continued on for another two and a half hours. We met my sister-in-law a few days after that and told her about our experience on the trail. She said that it was weird and she used to regularly jog the trail and she finished it in 20 or 30 minutes. So we decided to try the trail again with my sister-in-law and she was right. The trail was short. We finished walking it in an hour and it looked completely different. Also, there were no huge boulders, no pine trees forming an arch, and it was winding and not at all straight. Here's the TLDR. I tried a forest trail for the first time. It took my wife and I five hours to walk it. 
tried it a second time and it looked completely different and it only took an hour. Someone was there. I have this strange story from when I was younger that still bothers me today. So it was when I still lived with my parents, my siblings had already moved out and it was only me and my parents living together. So one day, my parents just casually went for shopping and I was left home alone. I had my room right in the attic and I was sitting in my window when I saw my parents' car pull back into the driveway. That's when I heard that someone was coming to my room through the attic. The floor of the attic was very strange, it was like plastic, but this is why I could always hear if someone was coming. So in the moment, I saw the car, I also noticed someone was coming to my room. I didn't think much about it at that moment because I thought either my father or my mother must already be in the house. But then I saw both of my parents were just getting out of the car, which was parked right below the window I was sitting in. And that's the point where I got a little confused and called out to my dad and was like, Hey, dad, is someone in the house? Someone is standing in front of my door. I even looked to my door then and I swear to God, I even saw the shadow of someone standing there because the door was too short for the frame and it had a large space underneath. I also heard someone breathing in front of it. I'm so sure that someone was in front of the door. I didn't sense any danger in the moment but my father responded with a slightly panicked voice calling out to me that no one was in the house told me to stay still and that he'd come check the attic and that's when I got scared because I saw my parents down there I knew that they didn't know who was in front of my door at the same time and I still saw the shadows of the feet underneath my door so I waited for my dad to come to check on me after a few seconds the shadows began to move and I heard footsteps walking away from my door Shortly after, my dad banged on my door asking if I was alright. The thing is, there was no way that my father wouldn't have met the person walking away from my door. There's only one way. No door, no window, nothing. But he didn't see anyone, and we also, like, searched the whole house and the attic, but found no one. If the person I so clearly sensed in front of my door didn't dissolve into thin air, then there's no way that he could have gotten away without being seen. My parents explained to me that I must have just seen it wrong, but I swear, I know what I saw and I know what I heard. Someone was on the other side of my door. A 20 minute ride turned into four hours. Here's a little backstory. I commute back and forth for school every day. There are two ways that I can get to and from school. If I take the highway, it'll be about 20 minutes. But if I take the back country roads, it turns into about 35 minutes. I sometimes like to take the country roads back just so I can have the windows down and relax after a long day. The country road is a straight shot, there's no turns that I have to make, and I just drive until I hit back on the highway for the last 5 minutes. Yesterday, I decided that since my one class got cancelled, that I would take the country road back home to feel a nice breeze and have a relaxing time. The country road takes about 20 minutes by itself though, 15 if I really speed to go through it, but I, I never usually do. I left at around 3 p.m. and I had the radio on. I was listening to some music and I had the windows down and I was having a great time. This is usually the time that I get to ponder the day and just get my thoughts in order. I realized that as I'm driving, the sky is getting darker and darker. 
It's as if it's turning into nighttime. I distinctly remember looking at the clock in my car when I first left school, and it was just after 3 p.m. But when I look at the clock now, it says that it's nearly 7.30. I think to myself, this can't be possible. There's no way that it took me four hours to travel the distance that I've done dozens of times in about 20 minutes. I'm home now, and I'm shook. My gas is not significantly different from when I started. My phone battery isn't much different either. I had a soda that I had purchased right before the trip, and that was still cold. This is the freakiest thing I've ever experienced in my life. Has this happened to anybody else? I finally had a witness to a glitch. I've been experiencing glitches for some time, like many of us on this subreddit, but no one besides me has ever witnessed it take place until now. I keep my expensive sunglasses in my car console always and without fail. On Sunday, my husband and I were in my vehicle and I reached into the console to get them. They weren't there, nor were they on the floor or on the visor or in the back seat. They had literally vanished from just a day's previous use. My husband saw me empty the console out and no sunglasses. We searched the house, but no results. The next morning, I walk out to my car and literally asked out loud for my glasses to be returned. I opened the console and there they were right on top, right where they should have been yesterday. I immediately told my husband that they were back and I also accused him of messing with me, but he insists that he wasn't pulling a prank on me and frankly, he's not the type anyway. Well, he finally witnessed one of the glitches that I keep telling him about and I've never felt more vindicated. Make like a tree and get out of here. Last November, before a work party, I decided to skip out of work early and go for a short run on my favorite trail loop. The trailhead is about one and a half miles from work, so I drove over and tried to snag a parking spot by my old apartment instead of the busy college parking lot closer to the trailhead. I would need to change clothes after and I doubt anyone wants to see bare butt by the bus stop. There was a dusting of snow on the ground but nothing was frozen solid quite yet and a good mix of mud and slush. I cruised by my old place and noticed the giant oak tree out front was gone. Not a huge surprise as I was moving out they were removing some of the larger trees since there's been more rain and wind recently. A couple of larger pines nearby fell over and almost smashed through a house. The odd part was I noticed how quickly the area had been reclaimed and landscaped. I was impressed. Some of the other land clearing efforts hadn't been so tidy. Unable to secure parking, I drove over to the parking lot, ran my route, again passing by the spot where the tree had been to complete my route. The people who lived there must have returned home as there were two cars parked side by side, one in the old parking spot and the other beside it just past where the tree had been, increasing the size of the parking space. I thought that was nice. It was a hassle only having one space for a car. In addition to my burgeoning oak pollen allergy, the removal of this tree seemed like a real win to me. I continued back to my car, changed out of my mud clothes, and headed to the work party. When I got home from the party, I told my partner about how the tree had been cut down, partly because she hates when any tree is cut down, doesn't matter if the thing is about to crash through the bedroom window and eat you while you sleep. Trees are precious and shouldn't be removed. 
and partly to express my admiration for the landscaping crew who managed to remove virtually any sign that a tree had ever existed in that place. There was no noticeable stump, no ground indentation, no dirt patch or anything. It was like the thing had never existed. She was amused, made a couple of comments about how the college loves to chop down trees, and that was the extent of it. Fast forward to January. I had my four-year-old in the car, and she asked if we could swing by the house we used to live in when she was a baby. I said sure, I pulled around the corner, and the tree was back. The tree just stood there staring back at me. I was so confused. I mean, I am so confused. I got home and explained about the tree and was blown off like I was crazy. The people who live there now must think I'm casing the joint with how often I drive by to check on the thing. And as of yesterday, it's still there. The Scranton Ghost Hey, I've got a weird one for you. I used to be a janitor for a small cleaning company. One of the buildings that I worked in had some really creepy vibes, but it wasn't terrible, just odd. I had to use this old freight elevator where you actually controlled the lift with the lever. It wasn't difficult, but it was weird. On the sixth floor of the building, I had said goodnight to the last person leaving the building. I put my headphones in and I started vacuuming. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a grown man standing at the office door and I said, Hey, sir, sorry, but the building's... And all at once, this thing was rushing towards me. I had let go of the vacuum and the dang thing just got right up to me and then disappeared. No cold, wind chill, no sound, nothing. It scared the crap out of me. The whole incident lasted maybe 10 seconds, and I know this is cowardly, but I just took off running, full sprint. I made my 60-year-old coworker come back up with me to grab the elevator. She said she doesn't clean the sixth floor because she's seen something one time, and she's never spoken to me about it again. The fourth floor of the building houses a courthouse. It's the least creepy place in the whole building. I was training a new girl and we had gotten halfway through the hallway when the lights went off. She grabbed my hand and said she was scared of the dark. We used our phones as flashlights and I found the lights. When I switched it on, the lights flickered and then started to hum really bad. The girl started freaking out and damn near had a panic attack right then and there. I was scared too, but only because I thought I broke something. The same 60-year-old co-worker turned the corner and the lights stopped flickering. She said, what on earth are you two doing? She didn't see the lights flicker, and the new girl quit that night on the car ride home. I had to show the manager the creepy hallway and all the weird stuff that's been happening. They never believed me. I ended up requesting a new position somewhere else and then quit due to an older lady grabbing me by my collar and telling me that I missed a spot. This next story was left in a comment. They say, I love the stories, Derek. I also have a story of my own. It's not as creepy as the others, but it still bothers and lingers in my mind to this day. All right, so back in junior high school, I was about 14, I had a friend who had green hair, a great personality, and a genuinely funny person overall. We've been friends for over four years now, and we were talking one day after doing our group project. I looked to him and noticed that he had dyed his hair black. I made a comment by saying, oh, you got tired of the green hair? And he said, what green hair? Now, I was baffled and commented back. I said, dude, 
your hair was dyed green. He said, no, it's always been black. Mind you, I remember taking pictures with this dude when he had green hair. Since we had a lot of pictures together, I took my phone out to show him, and lo and behold, this dude had always had black hair. Now remember, we've known each other for four years. Four years, and I thought this man had green hair. I even remembered making fun of him because of his green hair with my friends. When I asked my friends if he ever had green hair, they said, no, it's always been black. So now I'm totally baffled. I even asked his parents and their response was the same. Bag changes color. This is a small thing and it happened yesterday. A while ago, I bought a red insulated bag from Trader Joe's. Yesterday, I was going on my shopping trip so I loaded my reusable bags and cart into the back of my car. As I rearranged things, I made a mental note that I really needed to get a black insulated bag because I didn't like the red one and I could use a second one anyway. I stopped at the butcher first and transferred my purchase into the red insulated bag when I got back to my car and then went to Trader Joe's where I found and bought a black insulated bag. I get back to my car to unload my Trader Joe purchases and there was the previously purchased bag with the meat in it from the butcher, but it was black, just like the one I had just bought. I'm stunned. This person includes an update. It says, I googled images of the bags, although I would have sworn that the older bag was all red with no design, and was so when I started my shopping trip. The only version I can find online is the version that I just bought, and apparently bought originally, which is black with red straps and a red bottom. I'm totally freaked out because it was all red when I first bought it, and when I started my shopping trip. Is it the Matrix, or is it me? Blue Van Teleported So, I was driving with my girlfriend the other day. I entered a roundabout, it's a small one with two lanes, and suddenly, a blue van appears out of nowhere, splitting my lane and stopping in the middle of the roundabout with its hazard lights on. It is normal in our country for people to stop wherever they want. I just commented about what an idiot he is for driving like that and then started to go around him. I didn't pay attention to the license plate because everything happened so quickly, but I noticed a big scratch on the rear bumper. While I passed him, I looked at the driver to see if his face is as stupid as his driving, and he looked back at me. I noticed he was wearing a gray-yellow shirt and a baseball cap. About 40 to 50 meters after the roundabout, I reached the traffic lights. Looking in the rearview mirror, I still saw the van stopped in the roundabout. When the light turned green, I continued straight, and in the distance, which is maybe a hundred-ish meters, I saw the blue van parked on the side of the road, and I thought, huh, that's strange. When I reached him, I saw the same scratch on the bumper and I began to question my sanity. I told my girlfriend that this van has the same scratch as the one that cut us off, but she dismissed it as a coincidence, and she didn't pay attention to the scratch, the license plate, or the driver. She just saw the blue van. I looked at the driver, and it was the same freaking guy. Same stupid face, same shirt, same cap. I couldn't believe it. It's physically impossible for him to have arrived at that spot before me with no shortcuts and just one main street. Plus, I saw him at the traffic light still standing in the same place. This time, he didn't look at me as he was writing something down in some notebook. I just kept driving and still can't believe it. 
The only logical explanation is that they're twins driving the same van for some reason, but I don't know, man. What are the odds of that? I don't use any narcotics nor alcohol, and I was completely sane. Something is messing with me. It was always stupid things like the batteries aren't where I left them, the salt had been moved around, glasses going missing, but an hour later they were where I thought they were, but this one has annoyed me and my girlfriend. I keep my wallet in a specific pocket in my backpack. I've done for literally decades now, so when it's not there, it's pretty much lost. Cut to today. Desperately looking for my wallet for my bank card, we turn the house upside down and check all five backpacks multiple times and nothing. Not a thing. Nada. My girlfriend thinks I'm just being blind and not seeing it in my most used backpack, so checks it two to three times herself while searching our bedroom. I'm gutted because the wallet is new and I got a new bank card last month due to that disappearing in the house too. We put the blame on our niece hiding it somewhere and decide to search again when we return from shopping. We get in, forgetting to look for my wallet again, but we need a lighter or something so I grab my backpack, knowing that there's one in the pocket that I keep my wallet in. And lo and behold, I pull the trusty Charizard wallet out of the first place that we both looked. Something is messing with me and I'm sick, man. I know this doesn't seem that bad, but it genuinely feels like my house is gaslighting me into thinking I'm crazy. I saw myself at a stoplight. So I got out of work like usual, walked to my car, turned it on and stayed there for a couple of minutes until about 10, 12. I drove out of the parking lot, looked both ways for oncoming cars and out of nowhere, I saw this car that drove unusually fast to the same direction that I was going. What's crazy is that I instantly noticed that it was the same auto brand but my car was black and his was white and possibly the same year. He then randomly stopped and I figured he would stay there so when I went around him, I checked my mirrors and right when I went around him, he starts to follow me going in the same direction. Then I saw that there was an oncoming red light so I stopped, I looked in my mirrors and the white car behind me switched lanes and stopped in the left lane. I looked at his window to see who it was and we both looked at each other and I saw myself. Same eyes, same nose, same everything. I was shocked, but an identical me? He had this smirk on his face. I stared at him in shock until there was the green light and then he drove off. As far as I know, I don't have any mental issues. I don't do drugs or drink. And this event has me very confused. Does anyone have any explanation? Who was I playing with if it wasn't my dad? A few years ago, my dad and I were playing a game of chess on the floor in the living room. We were having a good time. Nothing really special to note about the game itself. But all at once, everything became extremely disorienting. The lights were flashing on and off and I was trying hard to grab onto the couch and pull myself up just to hold on to something in my confusion. I then woke up laying on the floor with the chess pieces scattered everywhere and my dad nowhere to be found. I ran downstairs to the basement where his bedroom was. He was sitting in his chair on his computer chatting with Facebook friends as he normally is. I asked him, what happened? He replies, what do you mean? And I tell him, we were just playing chess upstairs. W what happened? 
And he just seems a little confused and says, Uh, no we weren't. I didn't reply back to this. I just turned back around, baffled, and went back upstairs. I knew explaining this to him would not go over well, so I didn't even bother. What do you think happened? I told my boyfriend, and he thinks that he pulled a prank that went wrong, causing me to have a seizure, and then lied about it. But I just can't see a father doing something like that and then lying about it. However, he is very anti-medicine, so maybe? I know that answer is more logical, but I often wonder if there was something more going on. I don't know. I'm normally an extremely logical person, but in this case I can't help but wonder. Aliens? Matrix glitch? I don't know. Who knows? I've experienced other smaller glitches that are much more obviously some kind of glitch, like a deer running fast, legs moving but staying in one spot, or being told I was gone for hours when only minutes have passed for me, so I really can't discount some sort of glitch here. Was I abducted or something else supernatural? I'm not sure if this is the right thread. I've been looking for the right one to post to, but I'm out of luck. This is not a throwaway account, and I'm not ashamed. I don't know if I should report this or what. I just need some guidance. Saturday night, my boyfriend and I were heading home after a drinkless night out. I was driving and pulled up to a red light and told him to keep an eye out for the green light for me because I wanted to check my phone. Now, I always pull up on the white line. I hate when people stop just short of it. I was fully aware and not sleepy at all when I said this. And for some additional context, I was going down a slight hill. I was up the hill from the light, so I would have had to roll backwards up the hill with my car in drive. I also have the auto parking brakes where my car comes to a complete stop. The next thing I know, I woke up. Car is about 40 feet away from the line by the red light. Confused and a little panicked, I muttered something like, what the hell? And my boyfriend sat up and said, what the F just happened? I snapped at him. I said, let me know when the light turns green. He said, how long were we sitting there for? And I shrugged. He says, my video played for 10 minutes and went back through the video and didn't remember any of the video in the time that it passed. It creeped me out. I barely slept Saturday night and Sunday joked about it to my sister. But today, on the way to work, my boyfriend and I passed the same traffic light. So I asked him, hey, what do you think happened on Saturday night? It's weird, huh? And he had no idea what I was talking about. I recounted the entire story as specifically as I could, and he didn't even remember getting home or the ride home. So, do you think something supernatural happened? And if so, do I report it? And to where? I corrected my students' papers, but I actually somehow didn't. I'm a teacher, and my job sometimes requires me to take students' exam papers with me home to correct and grade, and because my wife is also a teacher, she often helps with them. This morning, we were on the couch working on some papers when our not-yet-one-year-old son started crying. So my wife went to the kitchen to make him some brunch while I carried on trying to soothe him until she comes back. He actually stopped crying sooner than expected, so I put him next to me and continued correcting some papers. My wife came back soon after and found me holding my clipboard and red pen. We correct and grade with red pen. I'm not sure if that's the case in all countries, but we do. 
She asked me whether our son let me work on anything or not, and I answered her that he hadn't let me correct more than three or four papers. I wasn't sure, so I asked her to check how many, and they were put on the coffee table face down. She looked at the corrected papers and then looked at me confused and then told me that the last one there had her handwriting, so it was she who corrected it. I tried to see where I put those last three or four papers that I know I corrected, but I couldn't find them. I looked at the next ones to be worked on and was shocked. The next four papers were the ones that I had worked on when she was in the kitchen. I could even remember the mistakes as I had just corrected them moments before, but how? I have very strong recollection of me working on those exact four papers, but there they were, with no drip of red ink on them. My wife stood there confused. She didn't have any explanation other than me having looked at the papers but not actually grading them, and that because the kid was being fussy, I got distracted and my memory wasn't clear, but I don't believe so. I was so sure that I had corrected those exact mistakes on those exact papers, circling ones and underlining others and grading the papers, but somehow I didn't. I don't have any explanation to what exactly happened with me, so I thought I'd post it here, hoping to find a rational one. Loop is time for a husband and his friend. Please hang in there as I'm using my phone. I'm a longtime reader, first time poster in this sub. This happened last year while my husband and his friend was working on my car and pretty much changing my whole front end of my car. I was inside watching his puppy and my husky play and making sure his pit puppy wasn't getting too rough. I heard the old renter's dog in the backyard bark to let everyone know someone was coming in, and then he stopped. We live on a dead-end road, so there's only one way in and one way out, and there's only five houses on this street, and it's all my husband's family and his friends. Well, I looked out the window and I saw my husband's niece drive on in, and I went back to playing with the dogs. About 30 minutes later, my husband asked me to bring the LED flashlight for them to use because it was getting dark. When I took it out there, he started asking me questions about if I knew what his niece was doing or if I had heard anything and I said, no, why? So he and his friend started explaining that after the first time his niece came in, every five minutes or so her car would come drive past and then back in driving past us going to her house. I only heard her car once and Jake only barked the one time, but apparently, to them, she drove in about nine times before my husband ended up calling his mom and asking her how many people were at her house and who just came in. And then it was like he broke the loop and she stopped driving in. But the weird part is his friend saw it all happen as well and they were stuck in this loop while I was in the house and wasn't a part of the loop. Strange things happen here, and I hate this street, but that was one of the weirdest ones. Sorry if this was long, I was just trying to set a picture of the street and where everyone was. Has this happened to you before? Where the loop lasted as long as it did? I'm confused as I was only 20 feet away from them and wasn't in it, or I would have heard her car, and Jake would have been barking every time she rolled through. But thanks for your time. Stain just gone. So I woke up with a big hand-sized period stain on my bed. My husband was reassuring that it was okay, but I was worried about the mattress being stained, so I lifted the sheet and it had leaked through onto the mattress. I told my husband to leave it alone and I would see what I could do with it later. 
So my husband gets ready for work and I help get his things ready and care for our toddler just waking up. After lunch, I come back to the bed and plans of taking the sheets off and putting him in the wash. And when I come back, the big stain is gone. I lift the sheets to look at the mattress and there are absolutely no signs of any stain being there. I called my husband and told him that the stain was completely gone. I was confused and he laughed at me and made a joke. Yeah, sure, I just got up and ran away. But when he came back from work, he went to take a look and he stared at me so confused. And we both just stayed there, confused as to why this giant-sized stain just vanished. We all know that blood turns brown when it dries, and we're broke, so it's not like we have anything fancy or absorbent or whatever type of sheets or mattress. It's just regular sheets. I cannot compute. I am Catholic, and I do believe in the whole afterlife and the dead communicating with us, but this is just out of everything that I know about and I'm still confused. This person has an update that follows. I don't think I explained it well the first time. So the sheet got a huge stain that le No, you explained it fine. You're good. <laughs> Trust me. I've never been able to explain it. Years ago, around 2009 or 2010, when I was a teenager living with my parents and younger brother in a small home, an early morning incident left an indelible mark on me. I had woken up about an hour earlier and my mother was instructing me to take my younger brother to school later that day as she was unable to do so herself. My father had already left for work. Standing in the living room, the creaky floor beneath my feet, I watched my brother descend the stairs to my left. The staircase was such that one could see nearly the entire flight, flanked by small wooden pillars along its length, with gaps between them offering a clear view of anyone ascending or descending. Wearing dull blue pajama bottoms that were slightly too big for him and a matching top, my brother, with his tuft of dark brown hair, excitedly skipped down the stairs. The loud creaks of each step echoed through the house, accompanied by what I thought were his slight intakes of air and hushed giggling. My brother was an energetic child, always sprinting from one place to another, often causing a bit of chaos in his wake. As he reached the living room floor, the floorboards creaked under his weight and then he was out of my sight. As I was still engaged in conversation with my mom, he seemed to rush from my left, behind me, and I felt the air move as he passed, stepping forward to avoid being bumped into. Sorry, Jay, I began turning to my right expecting to see him there, but there was nothing. No one. He was still upstairs, sleeping heavily. Turning to my mother, who had moved to the kitchen, I saw her alarmed expression. We discussed what I had just experienced, and she looked genuinely scared, always having been one to easily frighten. Though we don't really talk about it a lot, the incident sometimes comes up again during discussions about the supernatural and stuff like that. I'm generally skeptical about such matters, but that experience was unlike any other. It's hard to dismiss it as merely my mind playing tricks, making me hear and see things that weren't there. Or maybe they were. I could swear I saw him and heard him. Nowadays, I play it off as something I just saw out of the corner of my eye, but in truth, it was a much clearer version that I'm willing to admit. I often rationalize the experience without divulging all the details, but with the full story laid out, it's harder to explain away. I wasn't tired, having been awake for a while with a good night's sleep. I wasn't sick, and carbon monoxide poisoning seems unlikely. I've never experienced anything similar before or since. This just bothers me, and I find it impossible to rationalize. 
It might not be the most dramatic event ever, but it still leaves me perplexed. A few years ago, my best friend and fellow English teacher texted me that one of my students had been arrested for indecent exposure on the bus. I was shocked because I never would have imagined this student doing that. On the same day I received the text, my husband and I went to hang with some friends. We were sitting on their couch when I remembered the story of my student's arrest. I said to my husband, hey, one of my students got arrested. My husband said, I know, on the bus, for indecent exposure. I asked him, how did you know? He said, you told me a week ago. Now, I tried to explain to him that I had just learned about it that day, and if I had known last week, I would have already told my best friend. The fact that she didn't know until that day when she texted me tells me that I wasn't having some sort of memory lapse. But my husband insisted that not only had I told him, but we had searched on his office computer to see if it had made the news yet. I can't explain how my husband knew this story beforehand, but the fact that he specified the charge and location before I could reveal those details tells me that he really did know. And searching for it online is exactly what I would have done. Except I didn't. Was that an alternate reality that he experienced? Somebody, please fill me in. Nine years ago, I had an experience that I still can't fully explain. Maybe it was just my brain playing tricks on me, but it was unusual as nothing similar has happened to me either before or since. When I was a teenager, my friend, let's call her Sarah, and I went to a local festival that our town hosts annually. This event is essentially a community gathering with street shops, live music, and the like. It's actually quite boring. However, one special feature is the opening of several historic buildings that are typically closed year-round, except for this day. Now, this part is a bit cringy, but we were weird teens after all. We thought it would be fun to enter the largest of these buildings and search for ghosts or anything paranormal since we were pretty into that stuff back then. We wandered around the building, which is an old cabin from the 1860s, but the presence of other people somewhat ruined our experience. We decided to wait until everyone else had left before going up to the second floor to start recording. The upper floor of the cabin isn't very big. Once you climb the stairs, you face a small child's bedroom. There's also a short hallway to the left that leads to the master bedroom, with another small closet area inside, and that's all there is up there. Anyway, we went into the child's bedroom first and started recording in there. We joked about the mirror being haunted, made fun of a straw hat that we found, and even joked about seeing a ghost in the window. However, nothing unusual actually happened, and once I got bored of that room, I decided to check out the master bedroom, but Sarah wasn't quite done looking yet, so she stayed. When I was in the master bedroom, I filmed around for a bit and then filmed in a small closet but again, I saw nothing. As I turned out of the closet though, I was surprised by a girl that I hadn't seen before. I didn't even hear her coming in. She asked me what I was doing, and being the introvert that I am, I was embarrassed to be recording a closet, so I stopped recording, quietly said, nothing, and then went outside to find Sarah. When I got outside, however, Sarah wasn't there and a minute later she came out and she asked, why did you just leave me in there? When I explained that I thought she'd left me and that I had encountered a random girl, Sarah said, that was me, you just ignored me. That's when things became really strange. The girl that I saw didn't resemble Sarah at all. Sarah is short, blonde with blue eyes and was wearing a white shirt with shorts that day. The girl that I saw was much taller had dark brown hair and eyes, a longer face, and was wearing a dark blue shirt. I never looked to see what type of pants she was wearing, but her voice was deeper than Sarah's as well. It was like talking to an entirely different person. 
After that, I really didn't believe that it was Sarah that I saw, so I decided to look at the recording. But of course, I cut it off while I was filming in the closet just before the girl approached me. I distinctly remember stopping the recording after seeing the girl since I was feeling embarrassed about filming in a closet, so that really confused me. It was like something you'd see in a horror movie where you think you have proof, only for it to miraculously disappear. Unfortunately, I don't have the video anymore since this was almost a decade ago, and even if I did, it would only show me filming the room before it abruptly ended in the closet. I'm sure anyone reading this might be a little skeptical, as I would be too, but it's definitely one of the most unusual experiences I've ever had. As I said, it could have been my brain playing tricks on me, but you'd think experiences like this would happen to me more often if that were the case, so some of you may also think that I was just imagining it since I was specifically looking for ghosts, but we'd done that countless times before with nothing like this ever happening. I also don't think I'd imagine a ghost that looked so lifelike. This was like encountering any other person on the street. It didn't seem paranormal at all. All I know is that it's an experience I'll never forget. This person includes an update that's rather long. They say, after replying to comments, I was reminded of other experiences that happened to us after this that are related, so I'll share them now. There are two things that I'd like to point out. However, I was 16 at the time and she was 15, so we were young, but not like little kids or anything. I'd also like to point out that Sarah and I were mentally in sync, if that makes sense. I mean, we thought almost exactly the same, to the point where it was creepy. We even used to make fun of it. She's a very positive person, and I'm a very negative person, so we'd make fun of that old opposites attract proverb. I mean, we were so in sync that we'd almost have at least 12 jinx moments where we would say the exact same thing at the same time every time we saw each other. And these weren't common expressions either. These were just random sentences and phrases every single time. We actually wondered if we knew each other in past lives, and that's why we had that connection. I'm not sure if past lives are real, but if they are, I have no doubt that we'd have met. We also had this weird ability where we seemed to be able to sense when one of us was about to call or text. We'd get this feeling, and within a minute, it would happen. It was such a strong connection that our other friends even noticed it and pointed it out to us several times, so we knew that it wasn't just us. That all sounds completely made up, but I promise it's not. I've never had that connection with anybody else in my life, and I'm afraid that we lost it after she moved and then we lost contact, but I cherish those memories. It was such an unreal experience and one that I hope everybody can have at some point in their life, but I don't think many do. Anyway, the reason I decided to bore you with that long explanation is because when I saw the strange girl in the cabin that was apparently Sarah, it really did seem like a completely different person. I didn't have the special connection with this girl, and it was like talking to a complete stranger. I think that's one of the reasons why I remember the experience so well. Alright, well, I'll get on to the other two experiences that I was reminded of and I think are related to this one. The first happened the afternoon after we visited the cabin. During our time in the cabin, we took this old shoe buckle that we found. We weren't the best of people. It was about an inch and a half or two inches long and that afternoon we were jumping on her trampoline with it trying not to get hit by it because why, why not, right? I distinctly remember that it fell off five times. Up until the fifth time that it fell off, we had no problem seeing where it landed and then retrieving it within a few seconds, but on the fifth time, we couldn't find it. We both saw exactly where it fell off and it was right between the springs, so it couldn't have gone far. We both searched for it for about an hour, both under and within a 50 foot radius of the trampoline, but we just couldn't find it. I even went back a little later with my metal detector and it was nowhere to be found. To this day, we've never found it and we both joked at the time that it probably went into another dimension. Weird, right? The second experience 
is very similar to that one. We also took this old button from the cabin at the same time we took the buckle. Again, not the best of people. <laughs> and after we spent about an hour looking for the vanishing buckle, we decided to do the same thing with the button. And I'm not kidding when I say that it also disappeared the first time that it fell off. After that, we decided just to go inside because it was creepy that two things from the cabin disappeared in the exact same way. The difference here is that we actually found the button about a week later in the clothes basket in her closet, and she swears to me that she didn't go looking for it after I'd left. There's always the possibility that she did look for it and just planted it there, but it didn't seem like she was lying. And we had an excellent ability to tell when the other was lying because of that special connection that we had. I do still have that button as well. Well, after writing all this down, it does seem like a far-fetched tale, but this really was just one long, unusual series of events. I've never had anything quite like it happen before or since. I'm sure there could be a logical explanation for everything that's happened, or maybe it was just really a series of unlikely coincidences. I'll never know for sure. So, you can make of it what you will. I do know for sure that she and I had a connection unlike anything that I've ever experienced, so I at least know that that much is true. And maybe that connection is why these weird things happen to us. Something was written on my grocery list that I could not have written ahead of time, yet there it was, in my handwriting, and it's driving me crazy how it got there. When I start running low on household things, I start making a list, and I add to it over the next few days. So by the time I get to go grocery shopping, the list is almost done. Then the night before I head to the store, I always go on the grocery store app to load any coupons that I want or need. So I'm on the app, then I see a coupon for Blue Buffalo Cat Treats. It's not a brand that I normally buy, but I load the coupon anyway and figured I'll buy them for my cat. I go to my grocery list and add Blue Cat Treats to the list, yet my list, which had about 15 items written on it, had the words, blue cat treats, already written as the third item. I just stared at it, totally confused. It's my handwriting, and since it's the third item written, that means I wrote it several days ago. Again, I never buy this brand. No one else lives with me, so no one else could have written it down. And I did not go on the app days before to notice the coupon. I'm completely puzzled as to how I already wrote down blue cat treats with absolutely no memory of writing it, and no way of knowing there was a coupon for it either, and never buying this brand in the first place. I know it's not a big deal, but it's driving me crazy, and I can't explain it. Somebody in the comments of that story said, not only have we confirmed that cats can glitch through walls, but apparently they can also mimic handwriting. <laughs> Leave a comment that says, The cat did it, if you made it to the end of the episode. <laughs>